Can I have the mic? Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the DEF Core session. I'll stand so everybody can see me. Um, we had a great shout out today during the keynote. I hope everybody saw that. Um, we are going to spend a lot more time talking about what DEF Core is. I'm going to do a five minute intro and then we're going to talk about futures with our, our awesome panel. Um, but I do want to sp spend five minutes. And then tomorrow we have several hours of sessions talking about DEF Core and where it's going. Um, DEF Core is going to become the front lines of interop discussions. Uh, in the next six months, where we're really going to, the rubber's going to meet the road on talking about interop. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. And what I'm hoping for our panel to do is set you up understanding where, where we're going and what we see happening in the next couple months. My job is to talk about the history as fast as we possibly can. Oops. And let me actually. I see what I'm, I see what you're saying. Can everybody see it? All right. I'm not going to, I'm not doing this presentation right now. This presentation is something we gave twice to the community a couple of weeks ago, and it's recorded, and you can watch it two times and hear us say almost the same thing twice and hear then the questions. Um, but, so in this question, we go through what DEF Core is. Very briefly, DEF Core is the board process to drive interoperability. It's taken us two years to define this process because fundamentally our job is to tell people they are or they aren't OpenStack. And that is a very high stakes question. And as a consequence, we went very deliberately and carefully in addressing how we would make those decisions so that it was a community driven process and people understood what they were. The thing that's important for people to understand is often confusing is this is a commercial distinction. It's about OpenStack brand. It's not about whether you're a project or not. There's uh, several good talks, a lot of good talks about Big Tent and how projects get into the OpenStack community. This is about how vendors get to use the brand. And that's a very important thing. We, we talk about that a lot. And then the other, in all of this material, two years of material, um, the other thing that I think is worth pointing out uh, for people to understand as a background is that um, when we talk about DEF Core, it is by design a subset of the OpenStack project and is meant to be a trailing indicator. So it's about which APIs are safe, stable, long-term APIs for the product. It's about interoperability. And so when you look at what we do at DEF Core, what we're really doing is we're picking the components of OpenStack that are time proven, that are stable, and then we're providing longevity information about them. And the DEF Core is a lot about saying what things meet those criteria, and we spend a lot of time figuring out how to make those choices and things like that. So in five minutes, that's all I'm going to pick out from, from all that we've been doing for OpenStack. There's quite a bit about how that works. Um, OK, and then somewhere in here. actually have the cool no there there it is um, all right so th um, this is that we did I was going to put a slide together but priorities being priorities in here somewhere we have the list of questions here we go can you all read it okay um, these are the questions we worked out in committee to figure out um, what we were what we were going to do. Um, we have open committees, so if you're interested in joining the process, um, it is a board committee with open community membership. Anybody can come, participate in the discussions. Um, we love to have people participate. The more we have, the better. Um, and so, what we wanted to do is say, all right, we've gotten all this accomplished. We have interop. We're we're being presented as part of the keynote. It's really awesome. What happens? How does this impact you? What's what's the impact going forward? And so what I want to do is turn it over to our panel. I'll let you all introduce yourselves. Um, in the interest of time, we are going to uh, allow them to pick um, four of the six questions. So think that through. And then we'll pass the microphone, and you can answer the ones you want. And we'll just keep going in, in round. Um, I'm, we're trying to save. I'm rushing because we're trying to save time for questions. So if you have some questions 
um, please, um, we'll, we'll take the mic as a thing. Um, and if somebody from the audience knows the Etherpad link, it's just from our last meeting, could tweet the Etherpad link, then people could actually um, add questions under bonus if you want. That actually, that would be sort of fun. Did I miss something? Excellent. Uh, so I'm Mark Velker. I'm the OpenStack architect at VMware. And I've been active in the DevCore Core community since about December. Uh, Rochelle Grober, also Rocky Grober. You'll see Rocky every so often. I'm Huawei, and we've been working on this since January of last year. Uh, my name is Chris Hodge, and I'm with the OpenStack Foundation. I work as an interop engineer. I've been with them since about September. Um, and I was hired to work specifically on DEF Core and uh, help people out with their testing and uh, becoming DEF Core approved. Hi, everyone. My name is Agnes Ziegler, and I work at Rackspace. Uh, I joined Rob as co-chair co at the beginning of this year in January, and uh, it's been quite a ride. Hello, my name is Catherine Dip. I work for IBM, and we have been with uh, DevCore since uh, day one or day two, uh, <laughs> <laughs> January 2013. So, and my name is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm the CEO of Racken, and I've been uh, the co-chair of this committee for quite a long time. I don't know if Josh McKinty's around. Josh McKinty was, no? Okay. Um, was the co-chair when we founded this way back when, and then Alan um, Thar is the chairman of the board for the OpenStack Foundation, um, also has been instrumental. There's a lot of people in this room who have contributed, and thank you. It, I, I think I'd spend too much time if I called everybody out. Um, so what I'll do is I can read the, I'll read the question out, if that helps. Um, so why do you think this was an important effort? For the, who wants to answer? I got to be the first one. <laughs> okay. So uh, at IBM, we think that um, it is to ensure the interoperability between the OpenStack deployment is very essential for any open, open source project. It is also critical for the uh, why continually wide adoption of open, OpenStack. So with that, we have been committed to join DevCore, not only DevCore, also the tools. We're also joining a RevStack uh, project, which is the tool to help realizing all the goals that set forward by DevCore. When it's, it's worth noting we've talked about RefStack in the past quite a bit. RefStack is um, a community project that's used to collect the results from the tests and then allow people to compare them and see their results and score them against the DEF Core standard. So um, if you're interested in participating in DEF Core and, and testing your cloud, RefStack makes that job easier. So just as a, as a back. So our second question is, what is the hardest thing about getting DEF Core approved? Which of you wants to take a crack at that? So for me, just because I joined in January, the hardest part was consensus and all of the work that happened beforehand and catching up. I think the new people that joined the conversation, they're like, deaf what? And uh, bring up all of the questions and discussions that have been covered over the last couple of years. And uh, if you ask Rob, he'll give you the background behind every single decision. Red, I wonder if you should answer that question, Rob, because you, you've you seen, like a lot of us, like I know that I arrived, it, it, there was a question like, is the board going to approve DEF Core, is it going to be there or not? And so there was a question of what my work would be, but I know that this has been your, your kind of defining work as, a, as an OpenStack board member. Uh, yeah, it, the interesting thing about this is that it, it was really just being, pa you know, being patient and working through the, the process. Um, you know, when Alan and I sat down, and so if you're interested in the history, I, I blogged about every step. So my blog has a lot of DEF Core history on it, and it started with this picture that we called the spider. Very convoluted, where we basically said, this is a tangled mess, it looks like spaghetti. Um, and so the hardest thing was, was really that aha, getting to that aha moment where we just sort of said, we're going to have to pull one thread at a time, um, and then helping people be patient as we, we went through that process. 
So I'll, I'll take that from a, a slightly different meaning. Um, so I work for a vendor, a vendor which now has a DEFCOR approved product. Um, so we had to go through all the all the steps of the DEFCOR process. Um, and you know, we kind of had an, an easier time with that than some, I think, because I'd been involved in DEFCOR already and kind of knew what to expect. Um, but I think it, as we kind of went through that whole process, there were times when you know I'd talk to one of our engineering managers and say, well, okay, well, we need to do the DEFCOR thing. He says, great, where do I start? And I say, there's, oh, there's not a document that I can just point you to that has all the steps. Um, so for us, it was about kind of, um, one of the things that we wanted to do was continually kind of improve the documentation around that project so that we could figure out uh, for all the other vendors out there, you know, what steps we actually have to go through so that people can focus on, you know, the capabilities more than the process itself. Y'all are saving the last <laughs> questions. <laughs> well, well, and I, th I think just maybe speak a little bit to what Mark is talking about. There's, th there's very much a sense of this is the first time that something like this has been done. Um, so y you you have an idea of, of what your goals are and what you want to accomplish, but you don't necessarily have a complete understanding of, of, of the reality of the tools that are there. And so you you say, this is what we want, and this is the way we're going to go forward, and then you realize that, well, maybe that doesn't work for a particular reason. Like maybe, you know, you know maybe, you assumed a particular tool would be perfect for what you were doing. Like this test is going to test this thing perfectly, and then it turns out that it doesn't. Um, and so there's this constant reevaluation and learning. Um, you know, you know, while trying to stay true to what your what your goals and values are. And I'll put a slightly different spin on it. I think part of the journey getting to where we are now is literally getting all of the community involved and getting each segment of the community to step up and recognize that they needed to participate and for them to each define their own roles in the process. And so there was a lot of back and forth, two steps forward, one step back, but getting the TCs the TC to discuss what their responsibility is, was within DEFCOR, and I think that it will change over time still uh, as we feel our way through this. Getting the board to, to say, this is important, this is not, this part is not important. We need to be very clear on this, and this is something that we don't need to address at the moment and then getting developers in various areas and the vendors, all of them to step up and say, okay, this is what my responsibility is and now let's discuss how to implement. And so this first round is extremely important in getting that first stake in the ground. So for our next question, actually it's a nice segue, uh, is what, you know, how will OpenStack, how will DEFCOR change OpenStack in the next six months? What's the impact going to be? And then for six years, Catherine wants to kick it off. Okay. Uh, again, just like what Rocky was saying, community involvement is the key. What we need now, since we have the framework, we have all the step, all the way how do we score uh, the test, we need the data. As this morning, we talk about data. We need the data. RevStack, there are tools in there to do data collection, data, I mean data analysis will come. With those data, it will really, really help DevCore to define the common, the, the smallest denominator that it will be a common platform for OpenStack. So I think the DevCore will be really huge for OpenStack. I think operators going forward, they will ask, Will this have an interop flag? Will I be able to claim that, hey, I am passing all of these tests and I will play well with other OpenStack clouds? So this is from oper operator perspective. From developer perspective, uh, I think they will have to think, how do they want to stay involved in the community? Will they try to fork some feature or implement something that does not uh, work well with the rest of the community? So I, I hope that PTLs of all of the projects will be very mindful and actively involved. Uh, I would like to give a big shout out to 
John Dickinson, PTL of Swift, who has been part of this process, and he's asking, hey, how can I make sure that Swift is part of this, and how can I help? So I think one of the interesting things about the next six months is thinking about the past six months as well. Uh, because six months ago, DEF Core was not an enforcing process. If you wanted to use the OpenSock logo on your product, you didn't have to go past DEF Core tests. You just needed to ship Nova and Swift. Um, so just in the past few months here, it's actually become a process where um, if you want to ship a product with the OpenSock logo, this is now part of your game plan. Um, and in order to make that happen, we had to take a look at where the community is today. We didn't have the luxury of sort of um, starting DEF Core at the same time we did the whole rest of the, the software projects. Um, so in the next six months, I think we'll start to see, um, we've, we've got a very small, minimal set now. And I think we'll actually start to expand that set now that we have community feedback about where people are today. And I think we'll actually see uh, products changing a little bit to, to meet those increasing standards of interoperability over time. I see a lot of things happening over the next six months to six years. We're in the process in the developer side of going to the big tent. And the big tent means we're going to have lots of projects out there. And that means that the board's going to have to evaluate how the trademark is used on these projects and these products. Some of them are close to the maturity point the DevCore needs, but do we say that it has to ship, or do we have lots of different focused products that are defined by uh, subsets and supersets of the tests? That's one issue. Another thing that's going to happen in the next uh, six months with the Big Tent is that the API testing is going to be sucked out of Tempest and into in the, the individual projects as a single organization that needs access to those APIs across multiple projects, we've got to get the developer community to come together and agree on some standards on what these API tests are going to look like and how they're going to run. Otherwise, the vendors won't be able to run the tests, we won't be able to run the tests, and it will become very difficult to, again, get to the, the trademark issues. So. We've got that on the developer side. On the vendor side, we've got them coming together and saying, we're going to get this trademark. We're running the tests. Well, they're also going to start saying, you're not capturing a key part of interoperability. Where is this? They're going to start proposing tests, writing tests, perhaps. And they're going to get more involved in the development of OpenStack and in the testing of OpenStack. So we've got that happening too. And we'll have more interop tests, not just DevCore, but this allows us to open the door for interop testing with AWS, with the Microsoft Cloud, with other open source components that aren't part of OpenStack. And those tests will be allowed there and will be available for folks to sit there and say, this is something we want in OpenStack. And then the third thing is, is these tests are going to mature. And as they mature, they will move from just functional tests to actually, is this cloud really working interoperably? What are the minimal performance standards that are required for this to be a usable, interoperable cloud? So it's not just going to be function. It's going to have to be performance. We're going to have to step up the game over time. And there's just so much in the future that needs to come together. The community is going to need to actually do interoperability amongst themselves to make this really work and make this gel. <coughs> Yeah, and I, and I think I'll apologize in advance to, to Matt Trinish, who's the PTL of the OpenStack QA team and, and does the Tempest work, because I think in the next six months, um, there's going to be a lot more attention on, on his work. And, uh, um, and I think overall, that's a good thing. You know, that there's a, um, you know, we, we often, the, the gate is in some ways taken for granted. It's the thing that we just have to get by. Um, and now it's, it's, it's a thing that, um, you know, we as a, you know, as a, it, it's going to become one of these front and center projects. And it's kind of neat to see that. I'm a big fan of testing. Uh, 
So it, it's worth noting here that you know, in, in some ways, what we've done is taken Tempest, which is designed from a developer gate perspective, and morphed it into an implementation validation test. And so it is important to realize we're putting a lot of stress on OpenStack by using the community tests in this way. Uh, we always knew it would be stressful, but we felt that it was a much more authentic way to solve the problem than coming in with a, a, a second set of tests or an alternate set of tests. And so one of our charges for the community is to help us write additional tests that provide coverage for interop, right? We've given you a way to do it. We just need help creating these tests, so. All right, and we're back. Everybody else stop using the bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did I? <laughs> and uh, I think we're down here. I think you're on the scale 16 page. There, there we go. Um, ha, okay. So, um, yeah, this is so, you know, is, is DEF Core vanilla OpenStack? Does it, is it, does it create, is that a reasonable term? This is my favorite question. Uh, so, I think just like vanilla gets. Uh, a bad rap for being known as plain. You, we associate, okay, vanilla is plain something. Um, I think this is also can mean, okay, is this plain open stack? L just like vanilla is a great building base for all the big goods that we love, or ice cream, and uh, the same with DevCore. DevCore, I see it as a spec uh, for you to start out to build your open stack. That's, you start with DevCore and all the dev core capabilities, and then you build on top of that and add all of the great things, all, all the additional flavors and all the uh, additional features. So is it vanilla OpenStack? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the spoon that makes sure you can eat your OpenStack ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting tortured analogies. Anybody else? <laughs> is Randy Bias in the room? I saw Randy walking over. So for Randy, he's all about OpenStack flavors. It was a conversation we were having back in um, uh, San Diego. Um, we, we had a lot of talk about OpenStack flavors. And so Randy would tell you that we absolutely need this is the base, right? And then we need additional flavors on top. Every once in a while, it's important to channel Randy Bias when you talk about DefCore, because um, he's been a really at real, real good voice in helping keep this, this sort of on path and, and shooting towards the longer term objectives. Anybody else on the analogy? Yeah, it's actually uh, fascinating because right now, where we are in DevCore, we are the, the minimal needed to have a working operable, interoperable stack. But what does the future hold? We already have three flavors of vanilla. We have, That's, yeah, <laughs> we have storage, the storage stack, we have the compute stack, and we've got the platform. So we already have more than just vanilla. And moving forward, the real question comes in as... This is, this is what, what Rocky's referencing. But. Yes. Uh, at some point, DevCore will need to be able to say, what's the minimal for a trademark but what else can be added and should be added, and what are those minimums for this extra flavor? Because you can't, the platform is, is the whole banana split. <laughs> but there's, as the tent keeps growing, there's going to be the database. There's going to be the uh, Hadoop, Spark, whatever, and there will be all these different implementations on top of the core initial dev core uh, state. So we're going to have to walk a fine line of making sure that the necessary stuff is defined as interoperable without putting in stuff that doesn't belong. And I'm, I'm going to take that as partially your answer to number five. I'm going to segue to number five if you're all right with that, Mark. Uh, so the next question is, what are the hard problems in front of DefCore? So this is one that we've talked a little bit about. Um, as, as developers, we like the DRY principle, don't repeat yourself. 
Um, and as an open site community, we have violated that standard to death. Um, <laughs> we have a whole lot of different ways to do a lot of different things in open site. Think about it, we have two networking stacks today. We have two different ways to upload images into Glance. There's you know, lots of different alternate workflows. Um, part of the criteria that we have when we're evaluating Cape Deer for, for uh, DEF Core uh, is, is the capability widely used and widely deployed? So in those cases where there's more than one way to do things, um, in some cases, they're sort of mutually exclusive. You can't run NovaNet and Neutron together, for example, right? Um, so in those cases, we have to make a call as to um, how are we going to handle those situations that are both fairly widely deployed, um, but we have to ask if they meet those bars. Uh, so I think we have, we've got some choices to make in the community there. Second what uh, you said, uh, the next hard thing will be to define a platform that truly represents all of us all the OpenStack deployment out there. So to have a reliable uh, um, data point for DevCore to define that we really need the data, and we, we encourage all the vendors to submit the data, not just what the, the, the small set that we define today, but the complete set so that we can have a reliable view of what are the capability out there, what represent, what is the common point that represent everyone out there. So at IBM, we test all of our products through this process, and we submit the uh, data to the community. And, and we encourage everyone to do that. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, like, like a hard, one of the hard problems is, is I think you know, Catherine mentioned that it's a, it's a pretty small test set, and I think that um, it's not it's not difficult to pass right now. And I, you know, in some ways, that is that is by you have to start somewhere, and you have to understand. The, the challenges you face, but as as DefCore becomes more central and more important, at some point you're going to have to tell somebody no, um, and and that's when you're when you're when you're talking with the, the the vendors and the community leaders and the companies that are a huge part of what your community is about. That you know that um, you know if you, you imagine the community as a triangle where you have the, the the developers and the users and the vendors as all part of that triangle. At some point, for the standard to mean anything, you have to tell somebody no, and I think that's going to be really hard. Right, and I think uh, DevCore will have several really hard problems. Uh, some of them are capabilities. Some of them are Nova Network or Neutron, because obviously your cloud needs networking, and right now. That, of course, is not opinionated which one to use, but I think going forward, people will start saying, hey, please pick one. And uh, that's where we need community, community's involvement. And uh, if you want to be part of that discussion, on Wednesday, we have two working sessions. And so the, I think it's important to note the reason it took so long to get DEF Corps, and we heard for the last two years, why is this so hard? We have to tell people no. That is what's going to start happening in the next six months. We're going to have to make decisions where two, one person's, one, one company's cloud is not compatible and other people's are. And we, we, the reason we took our time to do this is we have to have that decision, that discussion based on principles and based on process. And so it has to be a fair decision, has to be an open decision. So you know, really important to have people participate in this because as we make these decisions, your clouds will be impacted. Your development efforts, if you're a developer, your vendor efforts, if you're a vendor, your user efforts, if you're a user, we need your opinions in this so that we can make good decisions about it, right? That's Catherine's, the data Catherine's talking about, but it's also your participation in the process um, so that if you think something's wrong, if you think it should be NovaNet instead of Neutron, that those are things that we need to hear from people. I'll move on to the next. What happens, so this is the catastrophe. What happens if, if this doesn't work out? What happens if DEF Core fails? I think if DEF Core fails, we will have OpenStack clouds that don't look like each other, where you cannot deploy your application on one OpenStack cloud and uh, on a different one and expect them to behave the same way. And uh, uh, worst case, probably OpenStack fork. If, if DEF Core fails. So I, I hope that does not happen. I hope DEF Core helps with the interoperability issues and some other questions as well. Okay, I'll stand and take. <laughs> 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 
I, well, I think I think it's an interesting question. Um, I, I think DevCore is, is is incredibly important. Um, and I, you know, when I when I when I took this job at the foundation, someone said to me, you know, who was very involved in the open source world, came up to me and said, well, you know, like, you know, Linux has tried this and Apache has tried this. And he kind of rattled off this list of foundations that have tried to do this thing and they couldn't do it. And he goes, what, 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 what makes you think that, that you and OpenStack can do this? Um, and, uh, you know, and I think, but, but, and I think one of the reasons why we've been successful up to this point is because, is, is in large part because we, is because we have such an open community driven process. So if DevCore fails, it's because we as a community have decided that it doesn't meet our end goals, and so we don't need it anymore. And so th is that a failure, or is that us growing and adapting to what our, f to, to what our needs are? And so, uh, you know, we, the, the, the philosophy behind DevCore was was encoded into our uh, in, into our um, into our bylaws, where we said that you know if you want to have an OpenStack product, it needs to pass a faithful implementation of testing standards, um, and so and so we're living up to that. We're living up to our values, and if our values change, then it's not failure. And and it's important to note that was in the original bylaws. We've amended. Yeah, actually, faithful implementation is still in the bylaws. We've just been extending and, and trying to figure out how to do that the right way. But you're right. That's that's a core value from an OpenStack perspective. Is it time to answer the bonus questions the bonus? that the audience is asking us? Yeah. So we've we've got a couple minutes for questions. We have some showing up. If you're interested in, if you're in the audience without access to the Etherpad and want to stand up at the mic, we'll um, add questions and we'll we'll go with that. Also. Um, yeah, if you all want the bonus bonus question, anybody want to take a shot at the bonus question? Um. So, so um, the bonus the bonus question was originally which uh, project or capability should be the next component. So let me define what this means a little bit because I, I was very brief in the introduction. Um, OpenStack, the Def Core has two levels as a platform level, and it has so it has that's where if you, you basically have all of the capabilities, and then. We have uh, people in the community who just wanted compute or just wanted object store. And so the idea is you could license just OpenStack compute or just OpenStack object. And the uh, design is such that we could bring in a new component where somebody could say, oh, I am an OpenStack something that was, not, that was not part of the platform. They could be their own standalone service, if you would. And so uh, I'm interested statistically in what people think the next one might be. Um, to me, I think the next one, and it's also the challenging one, is the network. The network area. I think it is a capability that we really need to work on. It's a challenging one. And I agree that we need to get the network right, but it's not in any state to make it in the next couple of few at, at least the next two DEF cores, I don't think we will have an answer for that. Uh, we also have various versions of APIs and getting the, the more robust and the versioned APIs in there. I really think it, the next step is to get to the versioned APIs of the various projects and it's solidifying, increasing the quality and we're we might see performance before we see Neutron. Okay. Well, let's, keep, let's keep our, since I have a line, let's, if you have a short answer for which one, and then I'll, I can answer the three questions really, really quickly. Um, identity is an obvious choice as a standalone component too. That you could, uh, so that so. would be Keystone effectively Thank as a you. standalone. <laughs> you have a, a uh, well, I was gonna say identity as well, so. <laughs> I, I actually think Trove is on track to potentially be a standalone project. So, um, so I just want to put in, in, in a reminder that right now DevCore is only concentrating on the user side. So admin is not part of the, the equation. And so looking at things from just user space is something you need to keep in mind in how we're moving forward. Right. And actually, that would be a logical, one of the extensions that the flavors that I would expect us to add would be to include admin. Is, so there'd be a, a DEF core version that included the admin capabilities. Please. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, that would that would make perfect sense. I don't know it. It wouldn't be vanilla. Um, I don't know a flavor. Uh, so, just to really quick, I want to respect the people on the stage. But I'm gonna just very quickly try and answer. So, vendor specific extensions are handled because uh, we don't require all of the code. We allow people to have substitutions. So that's specifically handled. Um, if you look at what's called designated sections is how we handle that. Um, we specifically do not version based on release, DEF Core Trails releases, so we switch to date-based guidelines. So the DEF Core guidelines are based on dates um, and they cross releases. So that's, that's an important thing. Right, and, and, and to add to that, you're the, you, the foundation will accept test results from the, from the last two releases of the, of the DEF Core standard. The last three, oh no, 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 the last two DEF Core dated releases, yes. you can be used for for your testing suite. And so, if you don't, for there's some reason you don't match the most recent, you can step back one. Uh, and the same is true for uh, the releases of OpenStack itself. That uh, DEF Core is guaranteed. Each release of DEF Core is guaranteed to work on the three most recent OpenStack releases. Uh, to get started with, de with DEF Core, I'd recommend looking at the Tempest project, uh, sorry, the, the uh, RefStack yep. Ref so, project. So uh, tomorrow at 2, uh, we have a session, how to get started with testing. Chris and I will hope to see you there. I don't get the room number. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, if you go to uh, openstack.org slash, is it interop or interoperability? Interop. interop. Mm -hmm. uh, so openstack.org slash interop, there's a page there that'll uh, kind of give you a rundown of the process and give you some pointers about how to get started. Okay, go ahead. Um, so uh, I'm head of engineering for a company called Data Center in the UK. So we've obviously just been through this process. Um, you know, so I thought I'd offer a, a, a couple of bits of feedback and, and hopefully some, some things to think about. Um, I mean, you know, I think the documentation on, on running the test suite was something that, that, you know, everybody probably knows could do with improving. I mean, you know, Chris was a, was a fantastic help in that, but, uh, you know, it certainly took a little bit of, uh, of tweaking before we worked out exactly what, uh, what things needed to, needed to run. Um, I think uh, listening to this conversation, you know, especially when you start going into the realms of production, you know, that I think there are, you know, the, the things that are very different in terms of, of testing a private cloud versus testing a public cloud that's got paying customers on it, you know, and, and that, that's also, you know, to a certain extent, uh, you know, kind of uh, is modified by the size of that cloud and what the impact of that testing is likely to be. So, you know, that's obviously something that would be a consideration for us as, a, as an operator. Um, and uh, I think, um, you know, and again, in the in the realms of performance, you know, as you start to move into multi-architecture, you know, how do you how do you set what those boundaries of expected expected performance are? I mean, you know, we've just launched an ARM64 cloud. Well, it's got a very different performance characteristic from an x86 lab. That, that's something we we have discussed, um, and it's coming. Uh, we're we sort of have a we have a long view, and issues like like actual performance testing and, and requirements end up becoming things that we expect to be absorbed in the, in the future. Great questions. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think do we we go until 15 of or? Oh shoot! No. One more. One more. I'll, uh, well, I, I wanted to congratulate you guys for working so hard on this. This is a huge effort. Thank you for doing it. Um, yeah. um, uh, I, I think my, I have a question, but I want to say also, uh, you guys talked a lot about interoperability. Another way to uh, link at that is uh, the applications. As uh, people developing apps, you know, what they want is to be able to point their app at any OpenStack cluster and really get that. So I hope that that DEF Core becomes a vehicle for people working on applications to understand which clouds that they can point this app at. Uh, and that sort of dovetails into my question uh, is about innovation. Um, I, I worry that DEF Core may by necessity have to try to trim down as much as they can to that widely deployed thing that you can really depend on being in a lot of places. Uh, but innovation is going to kind of push at all of those edges. And application developers are going to be targeting the newest feature, the vendor extensions, to, to take advantage of some new stuff. And uh, I wonder how long it's going to take for some of those things to eventually work their way back into DEF Core. Do you guys consider that to be a challenge? Will this slow down innovation? But that was actually going back, uh, Alan's smiling. If you go back to Spider, that was the fundamental challenge we, we started from is don't compromise innovation but keep stability. Um, and the, the, 
the very short answer to respect time on this is the reason we want to collect all test results, not just the passing, not just the required test results, is so that we can get early indication of things that are gaining in popularity. So when you're running, this is really important, this is actually a good closing note. DEF Core is, is about certifying clouds, right? Or validating clouds. It's very important that when you run the tests, that you run all of them and share your results. Part of this is to collect that data because if every single cloud out there is sharing the results of what tests they pass on the whole suite, not just the, the subset that's DEF Core, then we can start making the questions like you do. And we can start saying, oh, wow, this you know, Trove capability is deployed in a whole bunch of places. We don't wait for the user survey to tell us. We get real data from real clouds, real implementation. And that allows the innovative things that are, that are gaining traction to become identified as standards that you can start to depend on. So uh, it, we gave a lot of thought to that, and it's a great, it's a great question. Um, and we're always happy to tune the process to try and make sure that we don't lose the edge and become sort of a stale uh, thought. And with that, that's my cue that we're ending. Yeah, Panelists, thank you. That's fantastic. Um,